So the pen that I'm reviewing today is a pen that I've been meaning to review for the past two and a half to three months. In fact, I had to order this pen three different times to actually get it to Australia because the first two times I ordered it, for whatever reason, the customs agents in China seized it. And I have no idea why they do this because this is not the first time they've seized my fountain pens, but it actually happens pretty often. I was just surprised that they seized it twice for the same pen. Maybe there's a customs agent in China that knows I tend to order pretty good fountain pens and just steals it and is running around China with my fountain pens. I really don't know why, but this is the reason why I haven't gotten a review out with this fountain pen uh, sooner. Now let's talk about the fountain pen. The one that I'm reviewing today is the Jinhao 51A. And it's actually a new Jinhao that was re released sometime in the middle of 2018. It's not been out for very long and there aren't that many reviews on this pen. So I was actually pretty excited to actually order one of these pens. Now the thing about these newer Jinhao fountain pens, or at least the Jinhao 51A, is it's a departure from what we've seen with Jinhao. Because normally with Jinhao, they are you know, a um, pretty affordable fountain pen. They only cost about $2. And what you're gonna get is a decent nib, a good writer, and a pretty bland plastic body. And every now and then they'll print something such as, you know, the Jinhao Shark, something that is not great, but um, something that I love because, you know, it's a shark. This pen here, however, is different. It's one of the most beautiful Jinhaos I've ever seen. They're using really nice materials. This one here has a proper wood, wooden um, barrel and it doesn't cost $2. It actually costs double that. This is a pen that costs $4.48, I think, is what I paid for it. So it's actually a more premium Jinhao. Though to be fair, when I say premium Jinhao and lower end Jinhao, we're talking about the difference of, I don't know, $2. What can you buy for $2 nowadays? My point is, the Jinhao is actually stepping up their game. They improved their nibs last year and their manufacturing processes. And this year, it looks like they're making higher quality pens to probably compete with the new pen BBSs or the newer Wing Sungs. Now, here's the thing that I actually should add before I jump into the review, and that's Jinhao only really have about three or four different nibs that is spread across their entire selection of fountain pens. They have, I think, two variants of their number five nib that I've encountered. They have the number six nib, which they chuck on the X450, X750, and 159, and they have their hooded nib, which I've encountered on the Jinhao Shark, the Jinhao 911, and the Jinhao 51A. And here's the thing, there is a big price difference between the Jinhao 911 and the 51A. They both have the same nib. The only thing that you're really paying for is a different body. And that's one thing that I want to stress to people when they're looking at these Jinhao fountain pens. You're not paying for the nib, you're gonna get the same nib, you're just paying for the body. So let's talk about pricing because this fountain pen cost me about $4.80. But the thing is, it might not necessarily cost $4.80 for you because this pen's price actually depends on the material that you want the back of the barrel to be made of. And unlike other Jinhao fountain pens, there is a huge range of choices that you can get the back of the barrel to be made out of. So Jinhao actually offers three different price points. You can get a cheaper, more traditional plastic um, back of the barrel, and that'll cost you about $3.50. However, if you wanna get wood, and the wood is my favorite, and I think there's two or three different selections of wood that you can get, and that'll cost you about $5. However, if you want a proper acrylic back, and that is also pretty beautiful, that'll cost you a premium, and I think that's about $6.50 to get that. Now, before I talk too much about this fountain pen, let's quickly jump into the specs and ergonomics of this fountain pen. So capped, this pen is gonna be about 139 millimeters long. 
Uncapped is going to be about 128 millimeters long and posted is going to boost it to 150 millimeters long. And in terms of the weight, it's nine grams uncapped and 17 grams posted, which means that this is a pretty hefty cap at about eight grams in weight. And in terms of the ergonomics of these Park 51 fountain pens, I have to say, I always enjoy holding these fountain pens. Holding them is very comfortable. It might not always be the most comfortable pen to write with because I don't like hooded nibbed fountain pens, but the grips are always one of the things that I love about these fountain pens. They're one continuous curve, which means that there's no set spot where you need to hold it. You can hold it close to the nib, you can hold it far away from the nib, and it's going to feel incredibly comfortable which is really nice. I know there are some pens out there like the Jinhao X450 where you have to hold it right here or it's gonna be very uncomfortable, which is one of the reasons why I don't use my X450 all that much anymore. Using this pen un posted is going to be all right. I think there's enough length in there for it to be comfortable, but when I do use these fountain pens, I'm always going to use these pens posted. And the only reason why I use them posted is because it adds weight to the fountain pen. As I said, it's only going to be nine grams in weight when it's uncapped, which is the lower end of what I like to write with. When I boost it up to 17 grams, yes, it's a little bit back heavy, but it is so much more comfortable to write with. One thing that I will say is that when I first got this pen and I saw the grip, I immediately compared it to the Jinhao 911 because looking at them, the grips are very similar, but when you actually take a closer look at them, you'll notice that the Jinhao 911 actually has a much smaller in diameter grip compared to the Jinhao 51A. And when I measured it, the difference was only about one and a half millimeters in diameter. And when you think about it like that, the difference in diameter is pretty small. You're probably not gonna notice it all that much. But here's the thing, when I've been using this fountain pen and I've been using the Jinhao 911, I actually noticed that this pen here was a butt ton more comfortable than the older Jinhao 911. For whatever reason, that small increase in diameter makes this pen so much more comfortable to write with than the Jinhao 911. And as a result, I can write with this pen for much longer times than that pen. And for that reason alone, makes me enjoy the writing experience a lot more than the older Jinhao fountain pen. And for those of you who are wondering, no, unfortunately, the grip sections aren't interchangeable. For whatever reason, Jinhao have gone ahead and used different threads. So yeah, for anyone wondering. The next thing I wanna talk about is the aesthetics because I'm gonna go out and say, this is probably the most beautiful fountain pen made by Jinhao at the current moment. It really is, I have to say. This pen here is really beautiful to look at. It's not over the top and it's not tacky like some of those Jinhao Dragon pens that they make, but it is not understated at the same time. It is just a very nice looking pen. It has a very nice um, texture of the wood and it contrasts well with the stainless steel. I really do enjoy using this fountain pen and just taking it out. It is very, very nice. In terms of durability, this pen is pretty durable. I've been using this pen as an everyday carrier pen for the past two and a half to three weeks. I haven't been treating it particularly well. I've chucked it in my backpack a few times, I've dropped it a few times, and it's shown no signs of damage. The few scratches that I've gotten on the cap have been pretty well hidden by the stainless steel finish and I can't see any nicks on the wooden um, part of the barrel, which is pretty good. So obviously this pen is durable enough for me and probably durable enough for you. If we undo the barrel, which easily comes off by turning it, you can see that they've used metal threads and as always, metal threads get a big thumbs up for me. I always like seeing metal threads. They're probably the most durable and the strongest, and there's no way that this thing is going to break. Obviously, you can't eye drop it then, but um, considering that this is a wooden barrel fountain pen, I don't think anyone was ever going to eye drop it. Looking at this fountain pen, 
installed is the standard international converter and this is the Jinhao brand standard international converter and some people don't like them but in my opinion they're free, they hold 0.9 mils of ink, and I've only ever had one fail on me. I always like getting these free converters, they're very good at what they do. The only fear that I have about this being a wooden fountain pen is that every single one of my fountain pens that I've used heavily has burped ink or leaked ink into the cap at one point of their lives. I use them enough and I chuck them around enough and every now and then a little bit of ink is going to go into the cap. It just happens. In fact, my Pilot Prera was a good example of ink just being littered into the cap of the fountain pen. This hasn't happened yet with this fountain pen. I don't know if I've been lucky or they fixed that problem, but it hasn't happened yet. But my only concern is that if it does happen and I go ahead and post this pen and there's ink in the back, I fear that the ink might stay in the wood. It hasn't happened yet, but if it does happen, I'll make sure to update the video and certainly let you guys know what happens. So let's talk about the nib of this fountain pen. And as I mentioned before, Jinhao only have about three or four different nibs that they use in their entire range of fountain pens. And all they have to do is modify the fountain pen so that the nib fits in, which means that there's only one nib that they use in their entire selection for hooded nib fountain pens. Which means when I got this fountain pen, I was very familiar with the characteristics of the nib because I'd used it in the Jinhao Shark and the Jinhao 911. The good thing about these new Jinhao nibs is they've obviously gotten a manufacturing process that's very consistent, very reliable, and very good because using these two pens side by side, they were pretty much identical. The grind was pretty much the same, you know, they weren't scratchy, they were very good. And when I say they weren't scratching, there's pretty much no scratch to these nibs. No, they're not butter smooth, and when you do use them on uncoated paper, for whatever reason, there's this sort of grippy feel, like the nibs sticking to the paper sort of thing. It's not flowing smoothly across the paper, but in terms of using these nibs, they get the job done. That is all I can say about these. You're paying you know, two or three dollars for a fountain pen, uh, what can you expect? These nibs work and they work well. They're very consistent nibs, they're very reliable nibs, and you know, ever since they brought out the new 900 series pens, I've only had about two gin house that have had dud nibs, which is really, really good. This one here is a fine nib, it's obviously a stainless steel nib, but one funny thing that I have to say about you know, Jinhao nibs is their fine nibs on their hooded nib fountain pens are a lot finer than their fine nibs on their, I don't know what you call them, exposed nibs? You know, the more traditional nibs. Those nibs are like closer to medium nibs, while these ones here are closer to actual you know, Japanese fine nibs, which is something that I think is a little bit, you know, a bit of a fun fact, I guess. Well, there you go. Um, in terms of feed, I think this is the same feed that they use, you know, in every other Jinhao fountain pen. So these aren't the wettest feeds in the world, but they're pretty consistent. Sometimes there will be a little, a little bit of skipping if your ink level is getting low or you haven't used the fountain pen in a few days, but on, on the whole, they're pretty, pretty reliable. Obviously, because this is a hooded nib fountain pen, you're going to get close to zero flex, but, um, you can get the illusion of flex, I guess, just by getting contrast. So if you don't push down hard on one, the upstroke. Hello everyone. Welcome to the writing sample for the Jinhao. The 51A. And this is a fine nibbed fountain pen. The paper that I'm using is a brand new Clairefontaine um, A4 notebook. And the ink that I'm using is Robert Oster. This is Australian sky blue.
It is probably one of my favorite inks at the moment. Anyway, let's go into a quick writing sample. And as you can clearly see from that writing sample, there was no issues whatsoever. There was no issues with ink flow, no skipping. It was pretty much perfect. And there was, you know, consistent ink flow. It's shading where, you know, it should shade. And as you, as you can assume from it being a hooded nib, no flex whatsoever. Um, my writing is a bit slow, so let's test some quick writing. And even from quick writing, there is no issues whatsoever. If we look at the grind of the nib, you can easily see that there is no natural line variation. And in terms of line variation with the side strokes, yeah, even with the side strokes and upstrokes, there is no line variation whatsoever. Even on some, you know, pilots or some, you know, wing songs, there is some line variation between the side strokes and the downstrokes. Absolutely none here. In terms of flex, this is no pressure whatsoever and slightly building up pressure. And yeah, there's no line variation at all. And you'd assume that. So no pressure and full pressure. So writing our lovely hello or not. <laughs> That's not how you write an H. Uh, yeah, there's no line variation whatsoever. In terms of wetness, it's not super dry, but um, that is certainly below average. And you'd expect that from a dry hooded nib found bed. That is a gin how as well. In terms of reverse writing, Slightly dry, but uh, it's been ground pretty well to do reverse writing. Sadly, it does reverse writing better than my freaking Mont Blanc and, per and my Parkers. Now let's consider the fountain pen itself. And I will stress this one last time, when you buy a Jin Hao, you're really only paying for the design and the materials. The Jin Hao range is made up of about three different nib types, which means that no matter what Jin Hao fountain pen you're going to get, you're pretty much stuck with the type of found with, with the type of nib. You're going to get a different nib if the pen is hooded, a different nib if it's a number five, and a different nib if it's a number six size nib. But that's pretty much about it. So do remember that when you are getting this fountain pen, you're paying for the aesthetics and the body, which means that when you introduce this fountain pen into the mix, the Jin Hao 911, half the price, but still has the same nib as the pen that's double the price, you really have to, you know, think about what you really want from these fountain pens and are they worth it? In my point of view, would I buy the Jin Hao 911? The answer is no, honestly, in my opinion. I do think if I was to buy one of these fountain pens again, I would definitely go for the Gen Hao 51A. And the reason being is, I think spending the extra money to get a pen that A, looks nicer, and a pen that is so much more comfortable to write with, is worth that $2. Yes, it writes exactly the same as a pen that costs half the amount of money, and yes, it's not a full stainless steel body, but I do think getting a pen that's more comfortable is certainly worth it. Though, if you don't care about the pen's um, diameter, and you can write with the pen that is, say, eight millimeters in diameter, yeah, go ahead and get the Jin Hao 911, or if you want a pen that's stainless steel, go ahead and get the 911. But for me, 51A.